that have left some question marks here. Let's start with the offensive line. James Daniels and Mason Cole, both of which. So yesterday I had the fun task of covering Pitt spring ball and Pittsburgh Steelers welcome press conferences. It was a fun, enjoyable day for me, let me tell you. But uh, by the end of it, by the time Mason Cole and James Daniels were talking, my brain didn't want to process names anymore. So every time that they would come up on the screen and I was ready to ask my question, I would blank on their name. And like it wasn't like, a, oh, there are names here. It's just like there are nothing in my head, like nothing at all. So I'd just look at them for a couple seconds and then start talking. The last 24 hours, I have said both of their names at least 100 times just walking through my apartment. James Daniels, Mason Cole, both centers, both guards, drafted as centers, I believe they both were, and then moved to guard, both within like the last season and a half. James Daniels played pretty much everywhere. When it comes to both of those, what are your expectations on their role in the line? Because it feels at this point that Kendrick Green's getting moved, right? Yeah, I think one of them is going to play center. Um, I wasn't sure what they were going to do with Green, and I'm still not. Um, and even Daniels, I think, said it in his press conference that he's not really sure um, where he's going to play just yet. Yeah, both um, of them said it. Yeah, both of them said that. I know Cole said that he's more comfortable at center, which I, I get that too. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how they shake that out. I I, I really like Daniels Tate, though. I, I think Daniels is a really good player. Um, super young, too. So, I mean, I, I don't know that we've seen the best of him as well. Um, as in Mason Cole, I watched two games yesterday. I was kind of tweeting uh, with Nick a little bit about this um, or DMing about Nick. Um, I wasn't extremely impressed, but like he's solid to where I do think it maybe was a little bit more money than I would have anticipated him getting had I had more exposure to him before getting signed. Uh, one thing that's kind of cool about Cole is, uh, really tall for a center, complete 180 from Kendrick. Uh, he's like six yeah. five. Um, and also like something that I remember about Cole when he was coming out of Michigan is he actually played left tackle for them for a little bit. Like he played left tackle and center. You don't see a lot of guys have that the movement skills to play both of those positions. Um, and then he's played guard in the NFL too. So, I mean, he's played all over the place. And I think for the price point may be a little pricey for even if he does become a backup lineman as early yeah. as next year or the year after. It's a little pricey, but I think having a guy who act in college and in the pros has played everywhere is it's valuable. I mean, I, I do oh, think yeah. it's valuable. Um, so yeah, but uh, James Daniels, I think it's a really good signing, man. I really do. I, Yo, I, love I, that for I like both of the signings, even if Mason Cole, like I think people were somewhat underwhelmed with Cole, but I can see him. He's like a very big upgraded BJ Finney at worst, you know, like he's got starter potential and he could be a swing guard and play anywhere with comfort comfortability. I can't get words out right now. Um, but where do you like when it shakes out? Because that's my thing right now is like James Daniels is a piece that you're building on for the future. Mason Cole's only 25 years old, though. And then you have Kendrick Green and Kevin Dotson definitely still in the mix. If I had to pick the offensive line, it would be it would be Cole at center, James Daniels at right guard and then Dotson and Kendrick Green competing for left guard. But I don't know if I'm alone on that one. How do you think those shake out? Yeah, so it's tough. Um, I had the. Very big pleasure of meeting Brandon Thorne when I was at the combine. I mean, I told you about that conversation <laughs> for yeah. like 20 minutes. I, I love that. I felt like I was a lot smarter when I walked away, but he made a good point about this. Um, the Steelers have a lot of just mismatched pieces. Like, yeah. um, I think he tweeted this out, you know, Daniels, his best tape's been at center. Dotson's best tape has been at right guard, but there's a good chance that the, those guys aren't going to play there next year for the Steelers. So um, I know, with like Madden and just like a lot of fans think that, you know, you can just put guys wherever you want and just left and right and slide them all over the place. And it's not going to make that big of a difference. Um, it does, man. I mean, like, for example, like if you're, if you play basketball for like go outside and try shooting like a three pointer with your left hand, if you're right-handed, <laughs> you know, like whatever you normally yeah. do with your right hand, like throughout the day, do it left-handed and just see like how weird that feels. Cause that's, Everything when you're an offensive lineman and you're getting moved to the other side is completely different. So there is an adjustment period. That's why I'm curious on how that's going to play out. And then Kevin Dotson's a wild card. Like Kevin Dotson, 
wasn't that the Steelers weren't very happy with him when he came into camp last year. There was some rumblings that like, you know, he just wasn't ready um, mm-hmm. for various reasons. And, you know, do they view him as a starter? Do they view Kendrick as a guard? Do they view Kendrick as a center? Is Cole the utility? I, I don't know how it's going to shake out. Um, I think their best five on paper looks like some version of more Cole Daniels, Dotson, and Chooks. I think that's their best version on paper right now. But that does mean you're giving up on Kendrick Green. Do you have Chooks on the left side? No, so that was so okay. So left to right. So more and then probably You're saying Cole's playing right guard. No, I think Cole's playing center. I I think Cole's gonna play center. I I, you're saying Daniels plays right guard. Or left guard, excuse me. Right guard. And then Dodson at left. But you could argue, again, that you should probably move Kevin back to his original side because Dodson, I believe, played right guard in college. So they could move him there. I mean, they could put Daniels at center and put Cole at left guard. They could put Kendrick Green at left guard because that's where he played in college. So, I mean, we just don't – we just don't know. But, like, you know, with Dodson – he was really, really good at right guard in limited reps on a bad offensive line two years ago. And then he comes back last season, and, man, he was brutal the first month. I mean, they all were, really. I mean, other than aside from maybe – I mean, even Chooks got off to a slow start. I mean, the offensive line was terrible all year, but really bad in the first month. Yeah. Dodson had, like, two good games in a row right before he got hurt, and then he was out for the season. So it was just – I still think he can be a quality player. Um, I just don't know. I don't know if the Steelers, I don't know what they think of him, to be honest. That's, I think that's the big question is I don't think, I think that's why they made so many moves early because I think that they still add somebody in the draft too. I don't think that's oh, yeah. out of question. But I still think they could take a guard in round one. I, I do know. think they could take a guard in round one. Yeah. Like I really, at Kenyon, if Kenyon Green's sitting there, Where's I think that the Mike Tomlin's like, all right, yeah, we're going to do that. And Where's then, Johnson? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you have options, like, and then they just have options. Like who cares? Mike Tomlin said it a million times. If you guys just sit around, it's better than not having anybody at all. Um, I could see Dotson. That's what I said. Like, I tweeted this out the other day, and people, like, gave me a lot for it. They were like, why would Dotson be in question? I was like, because Kendrick Green had one bad season where he moved positions and was a third-round pick. So you don't come into the NFL as a third-round pick expecting to be a day-one starter, and you certainly don't come into the NFL as a third-round pick expecting to be a day-one starter in a new position that you've played one game in. Like, that's not that's not a, a an equation for success. And I think that the Steelers know that, that, that he has potential at guard. Maybe, maybe he has potential at, at center. I don't know. But I think that they were not happy with Dotson coming into the season. I think that that was a big reason why Rashad Coward was the starter all throughout the preseason, whatever anybody wants to say. Even if it was just a kick in the butt, why did you need a quick a kick in the butt? You know, like, why did you need that? And here's the thing, like Daniels and Cole added to the mix. Like I, like I said, I think Daniels is a good player. I think Cole is a f- fine player. Yeah, but yeah, he's not great. I don't I don't think this offensive line is good or it might not even be average still. It's better it's just not completely a disaster like it was last year. At least on yeah. paper, it could be. Yeah. But I think it's better than it was last year and that's encouraging. But that's what I'm saying like I don't look at this offensive line as a finished product because I think they still need to add a lineman um at some point, you know, preferably early in the draft. You need to acquire all the young pieces that you can because no one on that offensive line right now you look at and you say, oh, this dude's got his job 100% locked up. I mean, Chooks does because of his contract, but, like, he's even a guy, like, down the road. I think you could look and look at Chooks' play and say, like, yeah, I kind of want something better at right tackle, you know? But Oh, yeah. It's um, a one-year prove-it deal. It's a one-year prove-it deal with with backside so that you don't have to do another contract next year. That's all it is. Like if it turns into a starter, he's a pretty cheap starter, but he's, it's a one-year prove-it deal for Chooks. I don't think, and Moore and James or Cole and James, excuse me, their contracts are the same way. It's not like, oh, we'll put a bunch of money in there. It's just like, okay, we'll see if this works out. And if it doesn't work out, whatever, like the salary cap is going to skyrocket again next year. We're not really taking a loss. All of the Steelers deals like that, if, if you guys haven't looked them up on like over the cap, all of them are basically deals that they can get out of. Yeah. Um, after year one, if the player doesn't pan out, 
you know, and, and I love that. I mean, that's not different from their approach any other year. It's just I, I love that approach, especially for them this year, because they're not going to be contenders. And you want to see, um, you know, you don't want a bunch of sunk costs and guys that aren't going to be here um, long term. So I, I love the way that these deals are structured and I think they're good gambles.